your mindset and your money. What's really holding you back? The mindsets that keep you from making the money that you want to make. Hi, my name is Leslie Taylor. I am the Profitability Strategist. And today I am going to be talking about the mindsets that are keeping you from making the money that you want to make in your business. The reason why I want to talk about this topic today is because it is so prevalent among entrepreneurs that I come across. Um, there are several of these mindsets, several of these you know, ways of thinking that I come across that keep entrepreneurs um, playing small and not making the kind of money that they ultimately want to make. The mention of financial statements, P&Ls, and balance sheets likely makes, not likely, it does make a lot of business owners uncomfortable, even on some level, even for those folks who feel comfortable with personal finances. So what I want to talk about today is how do we move forward and how do we lead our businesses in a way that, in the way that they need to be led when we avoid the very thing that we say we want and we avoid the very thing that's most critical to us um, achieving and reaching our goals as entrepreneurs. And that is making the kind of money that we want to make so that we can live life on our own terms. Now, first, I want to let you know that if this is you, you are not alone because approximately 90% of the business owners I come across feel like this on, on some level. They feel some level of anxiety in this area, whether the anxiety is around numbers or money. And even those, like I said, who feel comfortable with numbers or, or um, you know, personal finance, um, they can also feel out of sorts when I talk about business financials. And so um, it actually, this is uh, part of the reason, in fact, that I began this business is because when I was starting, I knew that I didn't feel comfortable with business financials. But that's a story for another day. Today, I want to talk about these mindsets and, and um, if this is you, help you come up with some ways of um, working through those mindsets. So what this sounds like, if this is you, or if, you know, to help you um, identify is financial things aren't for me, right? Financial things just aren't for me. I've heard that a lot. Um, another one is just as you were describing, you know, when I start talking about financial statements, like balance sheets, statement of cash flows, people say, I felt anxiety rise up inside me. Um, I've heard numbers are not my wheelhouse, right? It's just not my jam. It's not my thing. Um, I've also heard I'm afraid of what I might see in my business numbers. I'm afraid of what they might tell me. Another one is, um, well, I'll come back to that later. So why is there so much anxiety around financials and specifically business financials? Well, after speaking with hundreds of small business owners, there are a few reasons for that. There's, there's a few reasons for the feelings of anxiety or just wanting to avoid it altogether. Um, one of them is, one of the main ones is um, that they just don't understand them and they feel ashamed by that fact because they feel like they should. Another reason is they've experienced some negative trauma growing up or over the course of their lives, or they've had somebody just discourage them in, in this area, whether it was numbers, whether it was financials, math, whatever. Um, or whether it was just personal personal finance. Um, they have a history of maybe not being good with math or numbers or finances. Um, or as I kind of alluded to earlier, they're afraid of what they might find. And that might mean, it, it could mean, and I'm sure there's other, other um, possibilities, but it could mean they're not as profitable as they think they are. Or um, once they know what's going on, um, they might now have to be responsible and accountable based on that knowledge versus, you know, where they are now, kind of, you know, doing what they want. So most of these things are rooted in either a past experience or a potential future that hasn't happened or might not, ne might not ever happen. Um, so those things in the past obviously can't be changed, but if we allow the anxiety or the fear or whatever the negative thoughts are to control us today, it's going to negatively affect the potential for profits, right? And I'm sure you don't want that. I'm not here for that. So today I want to help you with that. Today I want to explore three common limiting mindsets around our business finances and then address some of the main ones head on to encourage you to think about things differently. 
right? To give you some other alternatives and ultimately remove the barriers that are keeping you from reaching greater heights in your business. And so today I wanna challenge your money mindset. More specifically, I wanna talk to you about these, these three thoughts that owners have around their business's numbers that keep them playing small or at least from reaching their full potential or maybe working harder than they need to. Um, I wanna challenge those limiting thoughts and then provide suggestions for how to move past them. So let's dive into them. Thought number one is I don't like numbers and numbers don't like me. I was never good at numbers and math and you know, you can continue on. The rest of the thought would be and I never will be. So my answer to that is I reject that thought. <laughs> if you're honest with yourself, sometimes you do like numbers and sometimes you don't. When the numbers add up in your favor, you like them. You probably love them. Um, when they add up in your bank account, you love them. Um, you love numbers when someone pays you, whether it's cash, credit, ACH, PayPal, doesn't matter. When someone has clearly shorted you, however, and the numbers show that they owe you more than they you know, have given you, you like numbers, right? So when it's in your favor, you like numbers, you love numbers. Now, the opposite is also true, right? N nobody likes bills. Nobody likes to pay bills unless, of course, you're the one sending the bills. That's the only time you like bills. The fact is numbers are neutral and they tell the truth. They either add up or they don't. And so I'd like to challenge your mindset if that's been your thinking. Um, I'd like to challenge you to change your, your mental wording and what, you what you're telling yourself about um, you know, numbers in your mind. Numbers are neutral and they're not out to get you. They're not working against you. Um, they're actually pretty reliable and, once you, um, and predictable. And once you take the time to understand them and how they work, um, once you know what to expect uh, from that thing, from these numbers, then you'll know how to use them in a way that's to your benefit, that will benefit your business. And that's what I want to talk about. And that's what I want you to think about and focus on. Thought number two is business financials are complicated and confusing. I will never understand them. Now, I've seen this um, with my own clients, but I've also seen the transformation and when they do get it. And the truth is that business financials, the concepts that you actually need to know as an entrepreneur, they're learnable. And understanding your business financials, um, it, it's, it's not some talent you were born with or without, right? That's the good news. Um, you don't have to learn accounting or bookkeeping. That's also good news unless you want to, um, but I, I don't recommend it. I don't think you need to, um, but it's, that's up to you. You are the boss. Now, while I do recommend that you take time to gain a basic level of knowledge, you, you need to build your business successfully long-term. So there's a basic level of knowledge that you will need um, in order to do that. But like I said, it does not require that you learn bookkeeping or accounting if you do not want to. I would say find someone to help you make sense of it. Lean in and learn the basics like understanding financial statements. Thought number three is around shame and pride. Um, they are total opposite sides of the coin but they really have the same effect in the end. And um, they've got some similarities. And so let's, let's talk about that and unpack that. So that either sounds like on the shame side, I don't want anyone to think that I don't know what I'm doing. On the other side, it sounds like it's not rocket surgery, right? I can do this, I got this, I can handle this, right? It can't be that hard. So like I said, these are both two very different sides but the outcome is still the same um, in that it's keeping you from having your, your best business. So on the shame side, it um, let me let you in on a little secret, first of all. <laughs> when we start our businesses as new business owners, none of us really knows what we're doing, right? None of us really knows. So in case you didn't know that or you haven't figured that out yet, um, None of us really knows. We are figuring things out. Um, sure, some of us come to 
entrepreneurship, having worked in corporate, and we come with different experiences um, that maybe better equip us, yes, but a new business is just that. It's new. So there are lots of things that you won't know, you will need to learn, understand, figure out. Don't let shame keep you from your goals. That's what I'd like to encourage you to do. Don't let shame keep you from your goals. Let go of the shame, or it could be your pride that you're holding on to because you don't want someone to know. Um, don't let that keep you from going further. You won't be the first total mess that a financial professional has seen, and you will not be the last. Um, financial pros have years of experience that you don't have, so why be ashamed? Now, this is your business, and you signed up for the hard stuff. So ask yourself, are you going to let the shame keep you from building your best business and making money? Now, the other side of that is the pride. I should be able to figure this out. I can figure this out. It's not rocket surgery. Well, it isn't rocket surgery. It's not rocket surgery. And while I will always encourage you to educate yourself in the basics, if you choose to do it yourself, please learn the fundamentals. There are rules that must be followed. So take the time to learn the rules because the fact is, regardless of whether you know the rule existed or understood the rule or didn't understand the rule, you are still responsible because you're the owner. So let me let you in on another little secret. Financial professionals make a ton of money based on the fact that a lot of entrepreneurs think they can figure this out on their own and they mess things up in a major way. So we make a lot of money on these on, on what's called cleanups. We call them cleanups um, because we, in the process, clean up the mess that's been made and it costs business owners a lot. And that doesn't even include the money that was left on the table from the money leaks that were missed. So let's kind of explore the facts if this is you on the prideful side. Now be honest, have you taken the time to truly understand the fundamentals, right? The fundamentals meaning financial accounting. Are you actually getting it done and keeping up with what needs to be done? Also, I would say, ask yourself, why are you trying, what are you trying to ultimately achieve in, in doing this? Are you trying to maintain control? Um, are you trying to save money? Are you, do you want to scale your business? Just a question. And what, what would that require you to do? Are you trying to prove your intellect? Last question. Are you going to let pride have you messing up your money and missing opportunities? Just a question. So asking for help is a sign of self-awareness and strength. And it's required of leaders who want to scale their businesses. Just something to think about. Now, no matter where you are on your entrepreneurial journey, I really want to encourage you to lean in to learning what is needed to build your business so you can live life on your own terms. Will it require a lot from you? Yes, but you knew that. <laughs> but if you're willing to try and put forth an effort, I'm here to help you on this journey. So. As we leave today, if you have any of these mindsets or others that are holding you back in regards to your business's finances, I challenge you to sit down and confront them and challenge them and think about what is one thing you're going to commit to doing to move yourself forward in this area. Just one thing. If you've enjoyed what you've heard here and you'd like some additional tips to help your business be better or to help you be better in business, you must get a copy of my free guide to learn how to stop the money leaks in your business. And it's called Stop the Money Leaks in Your Business, the five money-related mistakes entrepreneurs make and how to fix them. In it, I share the top five mistakes entrepreneurs make that keep them from realizing their full profitable potential. This is in fact where I start with my new one-on-one -on -one clients. So grab the guide by going below to the links. Bye for now.